students. So today we're going to prepare a transverse section of the lower epidermal layer of a leaf. So what I have here is a leaf that grows just outside the lab. Um, I'm not too sure what plant this is from but normally this particular leaf it gives us the easiest way to get results. So what we want to do is to separate the lower epidermal layer of the leaf. So what I normally do is I just get a leaf and if you just tear towards the side which you want. So in this case we want the lower epidermal layer, the side that's going to have this tomato and the guard cells, not the surface of the leaf. We just tear towards that back of the leaf. We normally get this white film. So that should be a thin enough section for us to then stain and observe under the microscope. Now you want to make sure you use the correct direction when you're tearing the leaf because if you tear towards the front of the leaf, you're going to get the upper epidermal layer and it's the lower epidermal layer which we want. So like for example this, this is the upper epidermal layer as you can see here if I continue peeling off. That's the surface of the leaf. We want the lower surface this time. Now once we have that, we can just use our scalpel and take off thin segments. Smaller segments from this. You want to get mainly the translucent part. And I'm going to do several pieces because I want to try out different stains to see which one will give us the best results under the microscope. Okay, that should do. So now I have three slides already prepared. I'll take the first piece. And I'll stain that piece in some iodine for a short time. So this is some iodine solution. Drop of iodine should do. I'll take another piece of that leaf section. And I'll try it with some crystal violet. And then the last piece. I want to try with. some methylene blue. So let's prepare our first slide. We have a slide here. Let's get some cover slips. So I'll just get that out the iodine. 
shake it off a bit. Place on the slide. We're gonna place a cover slip. Then gently press down to reduce any air bubbles. And we'll do the same for the other two. So this is the crystal violet. Add a cover slip. And then the methylene blue. And again, these segments have to be thin enough for light to pass through when you're viewing under the microscope. So now what I'll do, I'll go ahead, set up the microscope. I have the microscope right here. We have the pupil cam adapter which we will put onto the microscope so that I can project that image onto a computer. And we'll take some images of these slides. I'll first start out with the scanning observe, observing lens, the objective. So I'll start out with the scanning objective and then we want to view it up to 100 times if possible. So I'll get back to you with those images in a few. Typically in this lab, students get to experience how important it is to focus and to adjust the diaphragm for the microscope. So the amount of light is very important in getting the images necessary to show. So first we attempt to get the stomata and the guard cells to show at the scanning objective. So I adjust the light with the diaphragm. We want a slightly brighter image so we can get the stomata to show. Once we get a clear enough image under the scanning, we can go to a higher power objective. So we do the 10 times objective. Here I'm just adjusting the stage a bit to get a good section that I can view. Now I switched to the 10 times objective and again I go in with the fine adjustment knob and just focus until we get those tomato cells showing. Again we've adjusted the light continue to focus we want a clear image that shows the outlines of those guard cells around the stomata and we can now shift to a high power objective so this is the 40 times objective now normally at this level we want to reduce the amount of light coming in so we close the diaphragm a bit. And it only takes some small adjustments to focus this time. Now another important skill that we've learned from this lab is staining. 
normally when choosing stains you're going to choose based on the particular organelles or structures you want to highlight a typical tissue slide that we would purchase would normally have more than one stains on it so sometimes you would view a slide and sections are pink while other sections might be blue or purple different cells organelles or structures within a tissue sample could be manipulated to stain different colors for example some cells might have cell walls so that might stop certain dyes from penetrating or leaving the cell so today I'll show you three examples of dyes that we use in the lab and you can view how each of them show the same image in a different perspective